Dear members of the International Society of Neglected Tropical Disease, it's for me a true pleasure to join you remotely from Rwanda today. I want to thank Gabriel Adams and Marian Campore for inviting me to participate to this incredible important meeting. It's truly very important that organizations such as your organization raise the bar and put the neglected tropical disease at the front line of things we should take care of in national and international programs and especially because it tackle most of them tackle the poor and we have a long way to go but before talking about the experience we have for neglected tropical disease in rwanda i would like to portrait the health sector in rwanda we have based our health program around some principle equity access for all and also this equity is based on geographic equity, it's based on gender equity and age equity. But also, we have used science in all decisions we have taken, because we want program evidence-based. We want also sustainability. So for, from the day one, when we start something, we think how we are going to make it sustainable. And we using those principles, we are now on good track to reach MDG 4, 5, and 6. Since 2000, we have decreased the mortality of children, child mortality by 70%, maternal mortality by 60%, and the mortality linked to HIV, TB, and malaria by 70% each. But we know that it's not enough because people affected by HIV that we maintain in good life may still suffer due to neglected tropical disease. In Rwanda, we must learn from our history. In 1994, we had um, the genocide against the Tutsi. It killed one, almost one million people and almost one other million fled out of the, of the country in Congo and they established a camp in the border. And in that camp, due to the negligence and the lack of preparation from the international community, there was a massive epidemic of cholera. And we lost thousands and thousands of people on top of what we lost in the genocide. And we came back all together a couple of years later due to good programs of reconciliation and development. But this epidemic of cholera have really traumatized our population. So now we have a very good program to tackle cholera. We have a task force. We monitor what happened in the border of this Congo because in Congo it's an endemic disease. And we treat quickly all imported cases, and we also manage to treat outbreak. We had one last year, but we managed to keep it small. Only nine people were affected. And this is due only to good prevention program, good awareness we have in community, all our community health workers inform and know what happened, knowing the sign and be able to, to ring the bell when there is an alarm. And immediately we, we distribute in the villages what it takes to assure that they have clean water, they wash their hands and to stop the propagation. That's how we have managed to really control an epidemic in a refugee camp. But we know other things. We know that uh, we cannot um, treat only and wait. We need massive prevention, massive awareness, massive availability of what it takes to control an epidemic if it happens, because it can happen every day. But there are other neglected tropical diseases 
a baseline survey done in 2007 show us that two-thirds of children had intestinal worms. And immediately there was a, a big campaign to give treatment and we saw that we decreased the prevalence of schistosomia mansoni by 82% and the oak worms by 72%. That shows us that we have the tools to react. That shows us that we can react and we have this possibility. But before 2007, nothing was done for neglected tropical disease. That's true that we were focused on the major killers, HIV, TB and malaria. But that's true also that we should have acted earlier. And as I said before, today we are almost ready. We have strong um, units that are monitoring all across the country the neglect tropical diseases. But it's still not enough. We need that in our neighborhood countries. We need that across Africa. We need that in the world. And um, we also learn from our history that we can never separate prevention and treatment. This is something we have argued the last decade about HIV. This is something we argue now about H HPV uh, vaccine and to prevent the cervical cancer. We have to tackle neglect tropical disease, thinking about prevention, thinking about awareness, thinking about availability of treatment and for all. So we know also that there are other things to do. We need also to develop hygiene and sanitation. We need to, to, to bring to the population the capacity, the access, long-term access to clean water in a sustainable manner because this will decrease the neglected tropical disease. We know also that if we don't do it, the poor and the people that are affected by neglected tropical disease are also the one affected by infectious disease. It has a big impact on the population, productivities and community life. A study recently done by a team of researchers in America have costed the impact of Chagas disease in the population. Their study showed that it cost more than seven billion. That means there is a big financial impact that should show the decision makers across the world that it's wise to invest in the treatment and the prevention of neglected tropical disease. I want to conclude by saying it is a moral imperative because it's social justice to avail services to the population. We have the science, we have the tool, we have no excuse. It's an epidemiological imperative it is a financial imperative and it's a moral imperative. In Rwanda, when we know, we used to act. But be sure we are supporting all action taken in the world to prevent and to treat together. So, you are needed in the place of work, in your universities, in the place you do researches, in place you are studying, to mobilize each and every one for this good cause. As we have the tool to act, let's act for a better world together. Thank you.